Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast is proudly sponsored by New Vision. My team, Kanda, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. Hi guys and welcome to the Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast, a weekly show about the Port Adelaide Footy Club. I'm your host as always, Macca19, and joining me as co-host, we've got Fishing Rico 4. How are you, buddy? I'm very, very good, Macca. Pleased to be here, and I'm very, very excited tonight. Absolutely, mate. I'm chomping at the bit for this one, mate. I haven't been able to wipe the smile off my face all day, because we've got a very, very special guest on this evening. He's one of the most influential players at our club. We all love his competitiveness out on the park, and the way he can influence the game, not just at centre half back, but also in the ruck. A very warm welcome to Jackson Trengove. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. I've, uh, I've been excited all day as well to get on, on, on the show, and, um, and hopefully I can deliver a few, uh, few one-liners for you tonight. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure to have you on, and uh, absolutely a big thanks for giving up your time this evening as well. No worries, boys. No worries. I knew, I knew Macca would be excited, Jackson, so a couple <laughs> of days ago I actually sent him a, an adult diaper because... Uh, <laughs> When, when Tim Geneva was on, he, he couldn't help himself, so I thought, if you're coming on, that's even bigger, Absolutely. so uh, Macca won't wet his pants, he'll be all, all good. <laughs> Thanks for that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Sure, all right, mate. Uh, hey, I, I had a quick question, uh, or a few quick questions for you, uh, Jackson. Um, one of them was, um, you're my favourite player right behind Jasper Pittard. What can you tell me about Jasper? Well, first question is, how come I'm behind Jasper? <laughs> so, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. No, Jasper's, um, he's, he's been really good for us this year. I think um, just with uh, his, his ability to be able to defend but then also run off, he's a, he's a creative player and he, he's got a lot of flair for him and he's, he's one of those players that really probably doesn't get enough credit for, for him breaking through the lines and, and using the footy. Um, I think he's going to be, in a few years, one of our most important players. Um, when he can get both um, his defending and his offense, you know, 100% of the time, he's going to be a, a crucial player in our list. And, um, yeah, just his, his ability to be able to break the lines, but then, um, you know, use his skills as well is, is why he's going to be such a good player. Yeah, yeah. He, um, is he a bit of a character around the, the footy club? He, he doesn't seem to take to the Twitter sphere or the or the Facebook like some of the other players. Yeah, Jasper's a he's a different unit, um, boys. He's a he's a he's an odd one. Sometimes you can get a you know you get a fair few laughs out of Jasper. Sometimes it's a it's at the expense of himself and and some of the things that he says that you know um, he probably shouldn't say and. Um, I think early on on Twitter he was he was quite good. I think um, back when we weren't quite winning some games, and I think um, Rooch was writing some some articles about us. I think Jasper um, Jasper didn't mind getting on Twitter and uh, and giving it back to some of the the people which he probably shouldn't have. So I think he he put the put the Twitter card away and just um, just goes about his business now. And he, he's really matured as a as a player and a, a person away from the footy club. And um, you know, as I said, he's a character around the club. The boys love him. He can say some um, some stuff that uh, you know you really have to look at yourself twice and have a think about what he actually said because you're not sure uh, sure what he was going on about. But um, no, he's he's good fun, Jasper. As you know, I dropped you down the player player rankings because you you shaved off that filthy beard, as my son Tyler calls. I was very disappointed when you <laughs> shaved that off. That was growing really well, mate. Is it going to come back? Yeah, I was, I was, I reckon I was the most disappointing um, person once that beard went. I, was, I was sort of sat there in, in grief. Um, I was, went back to Melbourne and um, you know caught up with my mum and dad, and mum said that beard's going right now. So um, <laughs> as I always do, I listened to my mother and I went upstairs and, and shaved it. I was that disappointed. I didn't actually clean up the the hair clippings. I left them in mum and dad's base, basement. Um, and there's a fair bit of hair, boys. It was it was like a haircut and. Uh, you know, I was I was as gutted as everyone else was. I I had some you know some pretty pretty bad feedback on when it went that um, you know all the boys sort of were starting to enjoy the growth that I had going there. And, and Westy, who obviously has one um, you know day in day out for for a couple of years, he uh, he was sort of disappointed. Him and Johnny Butcher that um, I'd left the club, and I'm hoping to get it back at, at some stage. Maybe uh, maybe at the end of the end of the season, I'll I'll really grow it back and keep it for pre season and then round one next year. So. I've got some um, big things planned for my beard. 
Oh, that's that's Fantastic. good work, mate. I know these are hard hitting questions we've got firing at you so far, aren't they? I was Super gonna, boys, I'm shaking. Uh, following up with Westy, I guess, is he getting a bit of a cult following going? I was actually watching him last game and I thought, man, that's an impressive beard. And I was actually thinking he should maybe release his own bloody line of t shirts or something because he's getting a real cult following going now. And he deserves it, boys. I mean, um, all, all seriousness and. and you know, they pump up Hoff's beer, but he doesn't get enough credit um, for how good of a player he is. If he, if he was in Melbourne or another state other than Adelaide, he'd be a, an absolute superstar. He, he's one of the hardest matchups, I think, in the game. I've obviously um, trained on him a, a fair bit, but just his ability to be able to um, contest the mark and, um, and, and his work rate is just um, phenomenal. He's got a massive engine and um, the skills for a bloke that's six foot five, six foot six, he's, um, he's incredible. And, um, Probably West off himself. He probably likes the the fact that he's you know probably not uh, talked about as much as what he does um, because he's just able to go out there and, and do his business and, and play his role for the team um, week in week out, which is what's um, what's really made us uh, you know been able to win these early games in this season. Yeah, yeah it was and it was probably um, a, a very good win for you last week considering West off and Schultze were probably a little bit down on performance. I mean Geelong got a fantastic backline themselves, so. They're gonna. You know, sometimes they're gonna get beaten or, or be down a little bit, but um, you know he uh, he stacks it up nearly every week, doesn't he? So um, you know he's he's really turned it around from where he was about eighteen months ago. But the whole team has too, haven't they? Yeah, spot on. I mean, I think you look at Westy and, and Schultz's game from the other weekend, and probably the the punters and the people out there would just look at it and say, look, none of them really got on the scoreboard and, and didn't have a massive influence. But um, some of the work that these, these two boys did to, to bring the ball to ground for our young coming um, forwards and the, and the midfielders to get in there was, you know, second to none. They were going up against two and three players at some stage and, and Westy and Schultz were just competing and bringing that ball to ground. And You know, us as a football club, we don't look over that. We, um, we really look into that and... Um, you know, whether it's a, a, a tackle or a, a spoiled in on the ground, um, you know, that means just as much to us as, as whoever kicked the goal. Yeah, yeah. And one last question before Macca starts asking the hard-hitting ones. Um, what's up with um, Chad Wingard not adding you on Facebook? That's a bit disappointing. <laughs> no, nah, he's, got, he's got me on Facebook. I just... Um, I've got a bit of a running joke with uh, young Chaddy. I mean, he's a, he's a bit of a rock star over here and I just don't want him to get ahead of himself. So I've... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know he gets as as much love as anyone um, anyone in the game, and um, you know he's a he's a star. But um, I'm just keeping him level headed and grounded, and um, you know with a few cheeky comments here and there, I like to um, I like to stir him up a little bit. I think I gave him a bit of stick tonight, and um, I think I got more likes uh, likes on that um, my comment than what he got. So I was pretty happy with myself there. <laughs> Good work. All right, I'll let Macker ask the serious one now. Good okay. stuff. Thanks, Rick, buddy. Um, <laughs> Look, as we do with all the guests on the podcast, can you let us know just a little bit about your footballing background and I guess how you got drafted to Port Adelaide as well? Yeah, I grew up um, in Melbourne, in Victoria, in a, in a little place called Strathmore, which is not far from Essendon. And just growing up, like every other kid, I just went went um, local footy, uh, played for Strathmore Football Club, which was which was awesome for me. And then um, I moved over to from a, a public school to a private school. Um, in year ten, to, just to play, just to play footy, pretty much. So, went on a footy scholarship to Penley and Eston and Grammar. Um, we had some other good players like Trent Cochin, Adam Merrick, who went to Richmond and Melbourne. Um, Jake Malsham, who was at Essendon. We had Josh Toy, who was at Gold Coast, and um, we just uh, we just played school footy. We didn't actually, uh, I actually had to give up uh, local footy, which was you know a little bit disappointing, but. School footy became my local, and um, and just played there and, and with Calder Cannons when we were able to. Um, we were able to win a, a premiership in 2008 with uh, might have been, yeah 2008 with Calder Cannons, um, and then obviously uh, at the end of that year I got drafted to, to Port Adelaide. So going into the draft, uh, I had no idea. I had actually ripped my hamstring off the fibula before I um, I come over, um, so I was a little bit. Um, you know, not sure whether where I'd get picked up, whether I was going to get picked up at all, because at the time I, I wasn't able to move my foot. I had a foot drop after my operation, so um, that meant I wasn't able to move my foot for about six or eight month, months. Months. Um, so it was a it was a big um, thrill for me to just to get picked up at all, and uh, and Port Adelaide was my home. And you now at the start, I was probably you know I wanted to stay in Melbourne and stay with family and friends, but then this football club took me under their wing and and really showed me what a what a great club we have, a family-friendly club, and um, you know the history that we've got in our football club. Uh, you know, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. 
Yeah, that's great, mate. Because you you've stolen the words right out of my mouth. That was the uh, that was the the thing that I wanted to ask you was from coming over from being drafted. Um, you know, obviously you would have had one perception of Port Adelaide, if if much at all, because obviously the focus is on the Melbourne sides. And then you've come over here. Was it a completely different experience for you from what you may have expected? Yeah, I think um, uh, Melbourne people. You know they don't um, rate Adelaide as a, as a place like the the actual place Adelaide. I don't know Melbourne people look at it as a bit of a, a whole. I, I mean they they don't see it as you know with the big city and and what Melbourne's got to offer. But you actually come over to Adelaide and, and you really um, you know you love the the lifestyle that's over here. There's no traffic. You have got lovely beaches. Always good weather. Um, but then the the people that it's like a little country town and probably that's the thing that I've I've liked so much the it's got that country town feel about it, and you know I went up to I've been going up Cora in New South Wales for for um, you know my whole life, and I just love going up there and, and just relaxing, and you know all the people around the town, and that's what Melbourne um, Adelaide's like a little bit. So the actual footy club itself, um, as you said, is is not really talked about in Melbourne, um, or wasn't at the time. Obviously, they had a, a fair bit of success in that period with with Chuck under uh, as the coach and, and Warren Treadway as captain, and. You know, you saw that from afar, but you know, I was probably a little bit too young to um, to understand what the the actual football club in Port Adelaide was about. And when you come over here and you meet, you know, the, as you said before, the likes of Timmy Ginova, who you had on last week, and um, all these past players that have played for the Magpies and and the Power, um, you really appreciate what um, what our football club's about. And it, you know, we're lucky to have this family friendly um, football club and. You know, we play football for for not only your, your club, but you're playing for your family, and that's what it really feels like with um, with Port Adelaide. That's it. Yeah, that's great. There was um, this is a it's a bit of a long winded question for you, <laughs> a bit of a statement as well. But I think from my perspective, it's a little bit undersold um, from you guys as a playing group because. You know, in 2011, there was a, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of rumours about players all wanting to leave and everything else. But um, as a group, you guys collectively all bonded and have showed your loyalty to each other and the club by all signing contracts. And I believe, in my opinion, what you guys did has also resulted on with the off-field success that we've had. And we get a lot of admin referral to the, the work being done, but I think the unity that you guys have shown has really flowed through with the support that we've got now with 50,000 members and playing to a, a packed um, Adelaide Oval. Um, as a group, are you appreciative or you know, are you glad that you guys have stuck together through the bad times and, and how much are you enjoying the new vibe at Adelaide Oval? Because as a spectator... I'm enjoying watching you guys play immensely. Even uh, brings me back to the 90s and the early 2000s, and uh, you know the atmosphere that's pumping out there is just amazing. Yeah, it's a. I'm not sure where to, where to sort of start with that, but um, as you said, uh, you know we we really stuck stuck together, and it was probably a time where there probably could have been four or five of us that that just left, and uh, you know probably would have been the easy option for for all of us, and. Um, we got together and ha- had a bit of a chat and, and worked out with um, with a few of the, the, the important staff members and um, that we had at the football club. We worked out a plan. We, w- we didn't want to just go in and sign our contracts and not know where, where we're actually heading and, and what we're actually going to do about um, fixing it because, you know, we, we're, re- we're only in the game for, ten, you know, 10 years if you're lucky. Um, and, you you know, if you don't win a premiership in that your, your period of your, 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 lot, uh, your, your career, um, you know, it's basically uh, it's basically not not a success. So for us, um, us players who were pretty competitive, and we got together and sort of sat down, and, and we knew that we had a group um, a group that could you know bring success to the football club. It was just about how we we're going to do it and what we needed to get in place to be able to do it. So um, as you said, now it, it probably frustrates people or players, some players, a little bit that we weren't able to get that. Um, you know that you know we're only getting eighteen thousand to games, and um, you know now we're able to get such a big crowd. It's it, it's unbelievable. But um, you know you sort of think, and, and and all football clubs are like that. People are, people always want to come when you're winning, and when you've got a good, um, you know, when you're playing a good brand of footy. And the thing that we weren't doing in 2011, we weren't playing a good brand of footy. So 
I think at the moment, even though we're we're winning games, I think even if we lost games, but playing the style that we're playing, people would still come and watch us. Mm. Um, back then, we weren't able to. We weren't, you know, we weren't fit enough to be able to play that that style of footy that we wanted. We weren't strong enough to play that style of footy that we actually wanted. But what we had was a group that was competitive. We had a group that thought, uh, believed in what we uh, what we, we wanted to do. We also had a, a club that wanted change, a club that wanted that knew that we needed to change to to get better. And I think um, you know putting all those sort of seeds together and and starting to work towards the goal which we are now. And we're still on this journey. I mean, everyone thinks just because we're six and or five and one or we're six and one or whatever we are at the minute, um, you know that we that we think that we're we're happy with where we're at. The boys at the moment are in the most hungry state that I've ever seen in our football club. The boys are, are working tirelessly to get better. We know that we're still a fair way away from what we want to achieve and I think that with the group that we've got, we're, you know, we're, we're going to have this ruthless attitude and a ruthless approach to, to getting the best out of us and, and bringing a next uh, flag to our football club. Just on the subject of player signings, obviously we've signed on uh, Tommy Jonas for another two years this week. Yep. He's got to be just about the most versatile player, not just at our club, but also in the AFL. I mean, there's not many players that can shut down a Mark Murphy um, and then stand a, a Tex Walker uh, the next week. Um, what's it like playing with Tommy and uh, and playing alongside him? Yeah, Tommy's awesome. I think the beauty about Tom is uh, Ken would, Ken would you know, he'd probably be one of the first blokes picked in our football club because you know what you're going to get from Tommy each week, I think. Whether it's a, a job to be done or, or you put him on a player, Tommy's going to Tommy's going to get that done. Whether it's tall or small, and, um, you know it's been awesome that, that the club's been able to sign him, uh, you know, really early on in the on, on in the year and um, lock him in for for another two seasons. Um, as you said, he's he's crucial and um, for us as a as a backline, um, you know, I love playing with him and um, just enjoy what he what he brings to the football club. How strong is he? Is he? Is, he looks like a really strong player and an intimidating player on the field. Is he? Is he a really strong matchup for for players? Yeah, he's a he's a beast in the in the gym. So he's a he's a really strong man, and um, yeah, he, he works tirelessly at his game. I think he's he's come off the rookie list and and really just worked hard in the gym on the track, at just improving each day. And um, obviously for for him, it was getting into the leadership group this year and and. Um, you know, the knowledge that he's able to bring um, to the young kids about working hard and, and um, you know, getting the best out of yourself, I think um, Tommy's the one to, to look at. Yeah, he's an amazing story. Um, we You mentioned um, our conversation from before when we were talking about Tim Jennifer and um, in the media it was you were uh, and a few of the other boys were a big driver of trying to uh, or eager to get together with some of the past players. Um uh, is that something that you guys really enjoy doing, and uh, would you look at doing it again? Um, yeah, I only spoke about this tonight. We had a, a day, um, probably a year and a, a year ago. I'm not exactly sure what it was. We had a day where we were actually able to have a few beers with um, the past players, and Timmy, obviously, and myself um, organised this day where we we had a few beers together, and um, I think it was actually one of the the breakups, and um, it was just unbelievable to. Uh, you know, find out uh, some some stories about their football club because their culture was, you know, that strong that they were able to. Um, if they lost two games in a row, it was a disaster. They were going down, working out what was what was going wrong at, at the football club. So they had this winning culture that was just, um, you know, hard to break. And for the boys to be able to sit around, have a few beers, swap stories, I think they got as much out of it as what we did. And um, you know, we'll definitely look at uh, trying to get that done again. Yeah, there's a you know there's a lot of knowledge um, uh, to be gained from some of those guys, I'm sure. I guess, and you mentioned um, just before, uh, you're not sitting back on your laurels, even though you're five and one, and you're still working hard. You, you've still, as a team and individually, you've got to be ha- happy with your own form and also the club's form where we're at, and and really try and push forward and and try and get a top four spot this year, no doubt from here. Yeah, spot on. I mean, um, as you as you said, we've uh, we've put ourselves in a really good position at the moment, um, being five and one. But um, that's all it is. Um, you know, it's, it's always a it's talked about, and the great teams are able to do it for a whole season. I think you look at Geelong, who's been the most successful side over the last ten years, and and obviously Hawthorne as well, who's been a, a powerhouse. You look at these clubs, and they just don't do it for little blocks. I mean, everyone. 
everyone can do it for a block of five or four or three weeks. And for us, it's uh, it's going to be about um, hopefully doing it for the whole year and, and just being that ruthless attitude that we've been able to bring for the first half of the year throughout every game we play. And as Kenny always says, it doesn't matter where we are or who we're playing against, we've got to be able to turn up. And, um, you know, the boys actually believe in, in what Kenny says and, and that statement um, is could be any truer. And, you know, we'll be um, we'll be putting as much effort into the, this game against GWS this weekend to, to try and tick off another another win. And um, obviously we've got Fremantle of the week after that. So we've got a really hard month coming up um, with some, some quality opposition. I think you look at GWS and the talent that they're having that side and obviously them getting the, the victory against Sydney in that first game shows you how good they're going to be. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll just go in worried about this weekend and worried about that football club who's, you know, on the rise and got some absolute superstars. So we've got a big job this weekend of uh, putting our heads down and um, and getting the job done. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And with my long-winded statement slash question <laughs> earlier, you, um, I asked a bit, but you probably missed it. Adelaide Oval, you're loving it. You're loving the atmosphere. And uh, is it how inspirational you're finding it running out to 50,000 people? Yeah, it should have happened five years ago, Adelaide Oval. Um you know, I've always been brought up in Melbourne and footy's always in the city and it just, uh, it doesn't only bring people to the, to the stands but it actually lights the, the city of, you know, Melbourne or Adelaide or wherever the, the game is. So I think, um, you know, it's been a massive response from the supporters and um, just the, the crowd attendance are unbelievable. You actually run out into the banner and, and all you want to do is just look around at the crowd and, and feel their vibe that they're bringing to you and I think, um, you know, 47,000 the other week. I think next game we have there, we should be able to tick over 50,000. And, you know, if we keep playing this brand of footy, there should be um, there should be 50,000 there each week filling the stands. And if we can um, if we can build on that uh, that crowd, I think that, um, you know, it's going to be very hard for, for teams to come over to Adelaide and, and play against, um, you know, not only us, but the Crows when they're versing them because you do get a little a fair advantage out of the crowd um, over here. We're the only we're the only ground that's got that locker room, and um, I was in there on the weekend um, with my kids. And I know when you came back from the win, um, you were tapping on the window. Obviously, you can hear um, people on the other side tapping on the window. But for people that don't know anything about it, it's obviously non see through glass. So for you guys on your side of the warm up area, it's just a mirrored uh, window. Is it a bit of a weird or surreal feeling knowing that there's uh, people on the other side watching you guys? Yeah, it's a shocking. Uh, it's a shocking feeling. It's uh, um, it's sort of unique. You know, there's people there, but you can't you can't see them, and they can see you. So it's a it's a weird sort of feeling. But um, you know, with that pumped after that win, I think I was uh, about to break the glass, and you could feel <laughs> the energy from from the other side of the people how excited they were. And um, you know, it's a it's a great setup they've got at Adelaide Oval, and and, and for the the supporters to be able to see, you know, what we do in a warm up and. Not not being there to distract us um, from what we've got to do, I think, is a, a massive positive. Um, and obviously, after the game, they get to see us sing the song and um, obviously enjoy some time with our family and friends that are, that are able to come down the rooms. And um, and then obviously the uh, the warm down and that. So it's a it's a great setup that they've got at Adelaide Oval, and um, you know we couldn't be any happier to be out there. No, that's great. Fantastic. Uh, I want to have a quick chat about Matthew Nix as our defensive coach and what sort of impact he's had on the group over the last 18 months because we had such a huge uh, change in personnel in that sort of uh, 2012 off-season with guys like uh, Serge and Chappie and Pierce and uh, and Salopec moving on as well. Um, it seems he's been able to get a really good young uh, group settled together and, and really all playing for each other. Yeah, he's spot on. I mean, Nix, he's done a, done a super job with the back line. He's, uh, he's not only... Um, uh, you know, coach. He's a, he's a good mate to a lot of the players. He's got a great um, relationship with uh, with the boys, which I think's um, you know why he's uh, he's so good at what he does. And uh, I think uh, you know he obviously he's got a young list. He's been able to develop this young list of, of backmen and, and really teach us some um, some quality stuff to that we're hopefully showing um, the supporters which what we can do. So he's been um, he's been awesome for everyone. All right. Well, before we go into the, into the uh, the preview of the GWS game, I want to have a quick chat about uh, Sammy Cahoon, who's uh, obviously going to miss the year with his knee, uh, which he did at uh, around about the 25 minute mark of the last quarter um, last week, and and as we just said, he's going to miss the rest of the season. Um, yep. Obviously, very very sad news, um, as he was in fantastic form the last few weeks. Um, it's really only probably our stable defence which has kept him out of the side. 
Um, he was coming fourth in disposals and first in marks in the SANFL, which was fantastic. Um, yeah. What's his morale like, and, and how does a, a long-term injury like that affect the playing group? If I yell here, boys, I'm just watching me greyhound go around, so I might yell if it wins. <laughs> but, uh, no, Sammy's, um, Sammy's obviously a, a, an awesome bloke, and uh, you know he's one of those characters that you love to have around the club. So for for most of the boys, it's been um, it's been pretty hard to see him get injured, but um, you know he's uh, he's a strong kid, and he's got that attitude that um, you know he'll bounce back after after anything. So obviously it's a it's a letdown because he was playing some some really good footy and. Uh, you know, it's, we're going to probably miss him a, a fair bit, but um, you know, Sammy's uh, he'll bounce back. Um, obviously, a knee injury is not ideal at this time of the year, but um, yeah, he'll work really hard at his rehab and um, and get that right. You've had a um, well, you had a you're a bit younger. You weren't exactly in the AFL system when you had your injury, but I guess you can still relate to what he's going through. Um, you know, and, and when I played amateur sport as well, you, if you get injured, you sort of feel like. You're on the outside. I guess you guys, the leadership group and, and part of the playing team, you really get around him and still try to make the injured players feel part of the team, I'd imagine. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, um, it, it's it's a hard one because you you sort of want to give them their time just to, just to you know, relax and, um, you know, get your head around what you've actually got to do in the next, you know, 12 months or six months or however long it is. So, um for him, it's it's going to be a little bit of you know wanting to be out there with the boys and around training because you you know you're doing your rehab in on your own, not on your own but you're doing it in indoors whether it's on a bike or in a pool or um, you know on the ultra G machine which we've we've been lucky enough to have but um, all the players just want to play to to be around your teammates and for us as a leadership group we're just going to have to keep an eye on Sammy and make sure he's he's always involved whether it be you know coming to the meetings or you know different dinners that we we have or um you know whether he can do some stuff out in the track whether it's handballs or um just keeping him involved so that his his mind stays fresh and you know you don't want to just get bogged down in just doing your rehab we'll be freshening him up whether it's you know going on a on a holiday earlier than than what the boys do and maybe getting in the in the box and seeing Ken's side of view um from a from a coaching point of view so we'll we'll be developing him um outside footy um and then hopefully he, he can get back as soon as possible How'd the greyhound go? Second, boys. It, uh, Second. it didn't jump. It didn't jump well, and um, it ran. It ran all right though, so I'm pretty happy. It's won six out of its last eight races. So nice. Is this it's an Adelaide-based one. greyhound? Yeah, we um, we bought it. Over, a few of the boys bought it over with um, with the coach. We bought it over from Melbourne. Um, yeah, and it's been absolutely dominating. So I just got a message from Kenny then saying pretty good run. Just didn't push through when she had had her chance. So. <laughs> Um, she's a she's a good uh, good dog, and it's a it's a good bit of fun for the boys just to get together every every night at races and go out and um, and watch something. Sounds like uh, Burjo Burjo is not training your dog then. No, well, Burjo was happy with it when it was six, when it was six from six over here. He was um, taking a bit of um, bit of credit for its uh, its its um, off season, but um, ever since he's had a couple of couple of losses, um, he's jumped off the ship. So we'll, uh, we'll try and get him in there doing a bit of rehab this week, and she should be right next week. stuff well look let's go on to the preview of the GWS game it's at Manuka Oval um, Saturday afternoon I think it starts at 2 o'clock um, we've got a, a, a win loss record of 2 and 1 against GWS um, we've actually played at uh, Manuka Oval 3 times in the past uh, all against North Melbourne for 3 losses uh, the last time was a decade ago in 2005 uh, probably memorable for all the wrong reasons where we actually led by 40 points during the third quarter and uh, and lost, uh, though it was Daniel Pierce's first game. Uh, Jackson, what are we expecting from GWS this week? Um, you know, I think they're uh, you know an unbelievably tough side, and uh, it's a it's a massive challenge, and it, it's I reckon it's as big as build up as, as what we had last week for the Geelong game. I think um, you know they've they've been able to knock us off once, um, you know, probably their first ever win, I think it was, and. Uh, you know, we're still, we still hold that, um, you know, in our minds and I think the boys are, are really determined to go out there and hopefully get on top of the game early. We think it's going to be um, wet and cold up there, so it's going to be a, a very physical game. Um, obviously, they were able to beat uh, Sydney in, in the wet um, in round one. So, for us, it's a, it's a massive challenge. I think, um, you know, we're not complacent with where we're at after last week and just the star talent they've got in their midfield, um, 
you know, with Callum Ward and Trelaw and um, uh, Stephen Cliglio and, um, you know, with their, their power up forward with Big Boyd and um, Patton and, and Cameron. It's a, you know, it's a scary lineup when you look at it at paper. So for us, it's going to be about um, bringing our game, um, not being too nervous about uh, the weather conditions and um, and hopefully we can go up there and get the win and um, and bring it back against uh, to play against Freeman of the week after. Well, I think the, I think the furthest thing uh, from your minds would be that it's a lay down Mazer this game, and uh, you know losing to him not long ago, it would be fresh in the mind still, and uh, I'd imagine you'd be very respectful, I guess, because our tyres have been pumped up in the media by everybody, and uh, so it'd be quite easy to sort of uh, just sit back and uh, think this is going to be an easy win. But I think you're spot on the money. They've got a lot of great players in that side, and I think Jeremy Cameron's playing as well, and yeah, that, he might keep you on your toes personally. And uh, there's a lot of great matchups for the weekend. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, it's the furthest thing from going. Um, Any time you play against GWS, so you can you can forget about just ticking it off and thinking you got to win. I mean, I think um, you know they, as I said, they beat us um, for their first ever game, so that was thrown at the door um, door then. So um, you know they're they're improving every year and they're getting tougher and tougher to play against. And they've shown this year the form that they've brought to games and um, that they can just turn it on as, as good as any other side in the competition. So. It's uh, it's going to be a massive challenge for our football club, but um, you know I think the boys are, are really switched on. We've trained well this week, and um, hopefully we can go up there and, and get the job done. That's it. Obviously, uh, Gussie Momfries is back. Um, Sammy Gray's omitted, uh, probably a little bit stiff there. The only one that's uh, probably a bit stiff is uh, Benny Newton, who's been in lightning form um, in the SANFL. Yeah, you say a bit stiff, but um, you know that's what good football clubs are. They some players are going to be stiff to, to miss out. I mean, absolutely, you, you're going to bring in Angus Monfries, who's you know 150 games of experience and, and was in really good form before his injury. And um, as you said, Benny Newton's been absolutely tearing him a new one in the um, in the uh, sample. So, but um, you know these players are getting the opportunity. You've seen Sam um, Gray come in and, and and really light it up in his first game, and and he took his opportunity then, but. Um, you know, as I said, good sides have this underneath them. They've got um, competition for spots, and um, you know, if you're not performing any given week, you uh, you'll get dropped, and someone else will come in and play your role. And that's all it is. Your football clubs, when they get so powerful, it's just about playing your role for the team. And um, you know, if you can't uh, if you can't do that on a regular basis, you'll find uh, you'll be playing in in a different side, and someone else will come in and, and do your job for you. How did how did Aaron Young go? Did he recover well? Did he get much of a spray from the from the team or the players for kicking a point from five metres out? Yeah, it wasn't um, it wasn't uh, too costly, so I don't think he caught too much. Um, you know, if it had been a, a bit closer and he had to miss that goal, and um, you know, it might have been a little bit different. I think he put his hand up straight after the game and put on Twitter that was the worst ever miss in um, history of the game. So. <laughs> I think um, he knew what he did, but for us it probably wasn't a big deal. I mean, you see Youngie go in and, and put his head over that ball in that third or fourth term and, and get absolutely crunched, and you know what uh, you know what he's going to bring every contest. So, um, you know, if he, if he mucks up a, a kick every now and then, you're not going to worry about it too much. Yeah, it was, it was a courageous effort. Um, one, one interesting stat with, uh, with GWS is they're absolutely dominating the hit-outs this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, so Loby's got a, a mammoth effort to get ahead of him again this game. We seem to be saying it every week, and he's he seems to be just steamrolling into the season as we're going along. But uh, former Port player Jonathan Giles will be a uh, a pretty mean beast for him to come up against, and probably yourself for periods of time this game. Yeah, um, yeah, spot on. I mean, they've had uh, Mumford out the last couple of weeks, who um, you know was getting ridiculous amounts of hit out in, in the first couple of rounds. Um, but then they've got that depth with um, with Jonathan Giles, who was obviously on our list, um, you know, a few years back. And then they've got these big um, big forwards that'll probably come in and, and pinch it. So, I mean, we've done our study on on their ruckman um, as we do every week. But um, we know uh, what we've got to do to to try and get on top of um, of their ruckman. And as you said before, Lopes's form's been you know as good as anyone else's. He's he's competed um, fiercely. He's been able to go forward and kick a couple of goals and. I think um, just his dedication to to the um, the task and and his opponent, um, whether it be studying what his opponent's going to do to him or if he does this, I'm going to do this, and um, just being able to set up our midfield, it's been uh, been a super effort, and I've actually learned a, a fair bit off him since um, since been uh, pinch hitting in there. 
Do you like going in the rut? I, I actually rate you quite highly as a rutman. I, I think you do very, very well every time you, you do pinch hit in the ruck. Do, is it a position you like playing? Well, thank you, boys. Yes, I, uh, <laughs> I, do, uh, I do enjoy going in there and I'm... Uh, you know, I just like getting around the, the ball and just competing. Obviously, I'm not um, not as tall and as strong as some of these ruckmen, but I think I've got a a, a good uh, a good enough lead to be able to compete with them. So, um, you know, while she's uh, I'm having a bit of fun with while she um, the rucks uh, the midfield coach at the moment just um, just stirring him up a little bit, telling him that I'm really enjoying it, and you know, it's just about me going in there and giving giving loads of chop out while he needs a bit of a spell. But you also want to be effective. You don't want to go in there. And, and lose hit outs and, and lose set and bounces. So it's a, it's an important role to go in there and play play my bit for the team and, and still keep us um, you know, keep us with our momentum going forward because Lobes has been doing a tremendous job. That's it. I mean, I reckon the midfield battle is going to be very, very crucial to this game. We've spoken about the hit outs. Uh, GWS, they're plus 21 on their opponent. Um, they're also plus 4.5 in clearances. They, they get a lot of inside 50s as well, but they only t- they're only 13th in marks inside 50. Um, that to me suggests they've, they've got a bit of a ball use problem um, going inside 50 where they, they play to the winning ruck um, but it, it tends to break down when delivering inside 50 and they can't get it back off their opponent um, they're actually minus 19 uh, against their opponents in, in disposals as well I feel for Port it's probably the exact opposite from that where we actually play to a fairly even ruck group uh, but it's really our, our full court pressure um, where we sort of outnumber contests and get that defensive uh, ability to win back the bowl, and we use it a lot better going inside fifty. Yeah, it's a that's a fair statement. I mean, you've, you've sort of hit the nails on the head with all the stats, but I think um, you know you can read into all these stats as much as you want. It's going to be a, a different game up there in, in Canberra this week. It's going to be a, a wet game. We haven't played a, a wet game at all this year, so I think the, the oval now will be in um, tip-top condition. I think at the start of the season. You know, most of the ovals aren't 100%. And it takes a little bit to um, to get them perfect. So they'll have that in good nick. And, um, you know, we'll go up there and uh, and hopefully get the job done. As you said, it's it's our first game in probably what's going to look like um, some wet weather. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a massive challenge for the football club away from home. It's going to be cold. Um, you know, it's going to be wet. But we're, uh, we're up for the challenge. And we're really looking forward to uh, putting on another show for, for our supporters and, and really show that, um, you know, we, uh, we belong up the top. All right, time for the big four, which is the big four questions we ask at all the end of these uh, these previews that we do. Um, Rick, whose time is it to stand up? Uh, I keep prefacing this every week because we're playing so well. It's um, I'm not isolating someone because they're playing poorly. I, I just think, Jude, I'm going to base it on conditions. And, and this week, um, I think... Thanks, Rick. <laughs> I think Matt Loby, I want him to stand up, Jackson. Um, I won't pick on you. I uh, I just think with the wet weather, um, we're going to need that big ruckman bust in the pack. So actually, Loby and Jackson to stand up because I think we're going to need both the ruckman when they're in there busting the packs, trying to help the boys get the ball ball out of the congestion because there's going to be a lot of congestion uh, congested play with the wet weather footy this weekend. Good stuff. Like it. For me, it's uh, Tommy Jonas, um, just for the sole reason that uh, he went on to Cameron at quarter time in round two last year and kept him to about two kicks and a goal for the rest of the game. Then he kept him goalless for the first three quarters in round 12 last year. Um, I'd love to see Tommy go to Cameron again and shut him out of the game, and I reckon if we do that, um, we're a massive chance of winning the game, and obviously it would really help celebrate his new contract as well. Rick, uh, who do you see as the danger man, mate? The danger man? I'm going to pick out uh, Callum Ward. I hope he's still playing. Um, <laughs> he is nice. he's, uh, he's a fantastic... His name, that's good. He's a fantastic player. I'd be hoping uh, Kane or, or one of our defensive-minded midfielders uh, can really shut him down and uh, and that will probably stop their forward 50s entries. Nice work. I've got another midfielder. I've got uh, Trelaw uh, as the danger man. I reckon he's the star of their midfield group and, and pretty well destined to end up one of the elite of the competition. He's, he's probably on the verge of that already. I think he's a fantastic two-way player. He's, uh, he's first at the club in disposals, inside 50s, tackles and contested possessions, uh, second in clearances as well. So he does it all. Um, he's fantastic at the stoppages. Uh, for me, he's the mid to stop. Nice work. What about Jackson? Does he? Do you have an opinion on uh, who we should be targeting? No, I think both those blokes you named are going to be, um, be pretty crucial for... Uh, 
for us to get on top of them because they, as you said, Trelaw's a, an outright gun and, and Callum Ward's a he's a beast in there. And I think um, a lot of their drive and a lot of their momentum comes from those two players. And um, yeah, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. I think um, you know it's going to go a long way for us to to winning the game if we can nullify these two players. Good stuff, uh, Rick. The key to winning. Uh, more the goals, to... boys. <laughs> yeah, well I'm with you on that one, Jackson. Kick more goals. Hopefully, we uh, hopefully we can kick 20 goals, even though it's a wet weather game. But uh, uh, the key for winning for me will be the contest- contested ball in wet conditions and uh, get the ball out to uh, to our, our midfielders in a better position and use the ball well. And uh, that will take us a long way to winning the game. Good stuff. Uh, for me, I'm not at all worried about this anymore. But and I don't believe a Hinkley coach side could ever be this. But for me, it was uh, the key to winning is not being complacent. Um, which I'm I'm not worried about at all anymore, to be honest. Um, I reckon if we play our own game, we should uh, we should expect to win. Rick, put your balls on the line, buddy. What's your prediction? Well, Jackson, Mac has got a bit of a history of actually betting against oh, us this season. Whereas oh, I, I just once. want you to remember that I've pick, <laughs> I've picked up. I've picked us. I've picked us every game, and uh, I'm a loyal. I'm a loyal believer, I, and I'm going to pick us again, and I'm going to pick us by uh, 37 points. Good work. I like that. Uh, I've picked Port by 39 points. Um, I, I reckon we'll be too strong in the midfield. Um, we've got the defensive options to, to cause issues for their tolls. Um, I reckon we've got a much more dynamic forward line, which will be too strong for their defenders. Uh, and I reckon we'll win by 39 points. Good work. Actually, you. And while you're on, Jackson, another one too. I, I, I thought we should shout out quickly to Alipati Carlisle. I thought his game last week on Tom Hawkins was fanda- fantastic. He'd be one of your best defensive mates, I'd imagine. And, uh, you know, his courage to, to get off the man and some of his spoils and his straight line running, I thought he was fantastic last week. Yeah, he's one of my um, one of my best mates around the club, and I think um, you know the amount of people that were were on his back over the last few years, and um, you know questioning his his four year deal that he was able to sign with the the club. Um, you know, he's really showed why the club put so much faith into him, and um, you know he's he's delivered in spades this season so far. And you know the the, the the key for him will be doing that all year. I think um, you know every opposition this year he's been able to probably take the the, the cheese with them and. Um, you know, he's played on some, some really big opposition. So um, for Bobby, uh, you know, he doesn't get enough credit about what he's what he's actually doing at the moment. He's he's not getting marked on um, uh, on forwards that are, you know, they're, they're in form forwards. It's not like these forwards are for out of form. I think Tom will kick five or six the week before and um, against Hawthorne, who's, uh, you know, we know how good their, their defenders are. So... Bobby's, um, you know, he's had his had his um, daughter, and um, you know, he's uh, he's playing some great footy at the moment, which is fantastic. I mean, just to give the uh, the punters a bit of a, an idea, I mean, how much of a beast of a man is Tom Hawkins? Because he looks like one brute, and he looks absolutely strong as buggery. And I imagine that would probably be a pretty close description, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've you've hit the nail on the head. I mean, Tom Hawks, um, he's a he's a powerful animal, and. Um, He's uh, he's very hard to match up on because he's got that strength and the marking ability, and I think Pate, um, you know, he was able to to wrestle him, um, you know, quite well on the weekend and really use his body um, to put him in some positions where he was able to run and, and mark and take off and and show what he can do. And I think he's been doing that all all year. I don't think it was just that game on the weekend, which um, which has been super for us. But as I said before, it's only round six, and and we need Bobby to do that all year. And, we need our players to be able to deliver week in, week out, not just for, for patches throughout the season. Well, look, let's, uh, let's have a quick chat about the uh, the Maggies game. It's, uh, it's the SANFL showdown. Uh, it's going to be played on Sunday at 2.10 at, uh, at Clear Oval. Obviously, it's uh, a bit of a tribute game for the young lad that, uh, that passed away earlier this year. Um, now, some of you guys know we uh, I actually work in Clare um, and I drive past the Oval about six times a day. The Oval is looking in absolutely fantastic condition. I took some photos earlier today and put them on the uh, on the game day thread uh, on the Port Maggie's forum. It's, it's very, very green. It's probably the best it's looked uh, in the six years I've been up here. Um, what are we expecting from this one, lads? A cracker. I reckon it's going to be a great game. Um, Obviously, the Ravens are very intimidated because they 
they've uh, left Taylor Walker and, and got Ben Rutten coming down uh, to Clare to try and beat us boys. So uh, they're obviously uh, wanting to try and take the chocolates. But, I mean, we've, we've been in such good form. And as we said, Sammy Cahoon's going to be a massive loss yeah. for us. But uh, it's going to be an exciting game. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, you, um, I think you're spot on there, boys. I think, um, you know, it's going to be a, a big build-up like any showdown is. I mean, the, both both clubs hate each other and, and want to win everything that they're, they're competing against, whether it's football, um, you know, on, on the big uh, the big dance in the showdowns or, um, you know, as this, this game is going to be just as big as, as one of those um, those showdowns uh, against the big crowd or whether it's playing basketball, we just hate each other that much that we, um, that we want to win them and... Um, this weekend's no exception. The boys will go out there, and obviously, you said Sammy Calhoun's a, a big loss. I think he's been racking them up um, in recent weeks. So we'll find someone else to, to fill the hole, um, like we have been able to do, you know, throughout this year. And I think, um, you know, with the the players that we've got out there, it's uh, it should be a terrific game. You, you're going to see a, a great game out at Clear Oval. If anyone's listening and, and, and thinking about heading out there or not, you definitely should. There's some some quality players that will be going around. And, you know, they'll be competing as hard as anything. Absolutely, yeah. Cameron Hitchcock, he's, he's another one that's uh, that's out of the side with a bit of a shin this week. He's a huge loss, and uh, and the youngster Darcy Byrne Jones is a bit sore, so he's going to miss. Uh, but back into the side, uh, possibly for his first game at SANFL level, is uh, Daniel Flynn. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, these boys are, are uh, have gone out with a bit of soreness, but you you bring in Flynnie, who's a you know a, a big unit, and. Um, I think he's got something to offer um, our football club and just his character around the club and, and how hard he was working. Obviously, he, he had to go back home for, for some family issues um, to Ireland, but he's, he's been able to, to have the courage to come back over to Australia and, and hopefully he can um, kickstart his career off with a, with a win, hopefully with the, um, the Magpies this week. He's a deceptive player, isn't he? Because I, I actually didn't expect um, Flenny to be as big as what he is. Uh, I mean, when I think of Irish players, you know, I, I usually think of the, the thinner, wiry types, but he's actually a, a pretty big guy, isn't he? He's about 191, but he's, he's pretty bulked up too. He's a, he's a monster, boys. Um, super powerful in the gym, um, athletic, super quick. Um, he's probably as strong as they get out on the field, I think, um, just with his brute strength, obviously, he's still got a fair bit of work on how to use his strength and you know where he can actually um, imply his strength. But I think um, natural ta- natural talent, natural strength. I think um, you know he'd be he'd be up there with the um, the strongest in our club. So you know you'll see some um, you'll see some big runs from him. Obviously, you you know you'll see some errors, but you just want to see him having a crack and and he'll bring that um, with his effort on the weekend. Don't forget, guys and girls, we've got the uh, the locker room tickets available. We've got the two tickets for Port Hawthorne. It's been announced uh, this week uh, on the Port website that the game is looking like it's going to be a sellout, and I'd imagine it would be. And, and as uh, we alluded to earlier, I'd imagine we'll get over 50,000 people there. Um, so those locker room tickets are available, which we spoke about before. Never know, maybe uh, Jackson will do a double tap on the window for the winners of the tickets. Um, all you have to do is... Just get on a Facebook, like a podcast, uh, tag a friend's name in it and you'll go into the draw to win the tickets. There's still a few podcasts to go and you can even like the older ones that we've done. Um, more the merrier and keep doing it and keep going in the draw. And Jackson, if you know any Port supporters, tell them to feel free to, uh, uh, to get on and like it and they can go in the draw to win the tickets. Well, Jackson, thanks for giving up your time this evening. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk about Port Adelaide with you. No worries, boys. Best of luck for the weekend. Cheers, mate. Hopefully we can get another That's win. It. Rick, as always, buddy. Yeah, pleasure, mate. Thanks. Go the power and go the Maggies. Go for it, Cheers, boys. Carlisle sends it long. Modlop just on and takes the mark. He can give Port Adelaide the lead. Hamstring hurt. Plays on. Sends it high. Goal square. Long. McVay gets back. Port Adelaide in front. The magic man. Of all people, 